www.twitch.tv slash Elaheim. I'm here to talk about my Murloc Warlock deck. Um, this deck was made uh, originally as a, as a troll deck. We just thought at the very beginning of the first day of getting into this, we thought, okay, we'll just go ahead and throw Murlocs onto the Warlock and make a Murloc Warlock deck and have a good time and everything. And then I started to realize it's actually a pretty good deck and I fine-tuned it to quite a, a nice uh, 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 group of cards here. So I'll go ahead and explain everything. Now, there's other. I've I've tried other classes with Murloc. I'll start out by saying that um, I tried Shaman and uh, Druid um, and Hunter, but I think war, uh, Warlock is the best, and here's why: um, Shaman is a very strong choice. It's no doubt about it. It's a very strong choice. But the thing is about Shaman is you don't have the draw power. And so Shaman's one of those things where you throw it out early and you can get it really stacked and then Bloodlust or something like that, real big damage. But if he keeps you contained early, you're done. And that's it with the Shaman. Like, you're done and it's it's over. The two cost to throw out totems too uh, is very good. Um, but it can get in the way of, of throwing out your your uh, your Murlocs and stuff too. So um, that considered, I'll go ahead and talk about the Druid. The Druid I thought throwing Innervate so you can get the extra mana to throw out quicker, but it's too situational. You're, you're relying on two cards to give you an advantage uh, uh, for this deck, and it's just, it, it rarely works. But the Warlock drawing cards for two health for a speed deck uh, is, is really, 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 really good. And not only that, but they also have Blood Imps. So we'll start with the cards. Uh, Blood Imps have Stealth, first of all, and they give all your minions one health. It's a one cost, one, one card. Okay, you can play that early on like the first the first uh, turn, and you pretty much have uh, an invulnerable, except for spells, you know, if they do like a board clear, you pretty much have an invulnerability uh, plus one, not only for, um, or plus one for all your, your minions, but it's stealth, so they can't attack it directly with other minions, so it's a really, really, really strong card for this. I have uh, one uh, Goldshire Footman, just an early taunt if I need it, we've of course got the, the, Grim, the Grimscale Oracles, which is a plus one to all Murlocs. Uh, the Murloc Raider, we've got the Tide Caller, um, uh, Shield Breaker, Void Walker, uh, Blood Gill Warrior, Knife Juggler, Lore Walker Cho, uh, we've got Murloc Tide Hunter, uh, Nat, Cold Light, uh, Murloc War Leader, Raid Leader, Old Murkai, Hogger, and the Sea Giant. Now let me explain the synergy between all these cards. The Murlocs synergize very well, but it's kind of, it's kind of, um, it, it takes you a little bit to kind of get used to. These, if you have them, should normally, normally, always go out first. Because whenever a Murloc is summoned after it, it gains one attack. It starts to stack quite a bit. Especially when you jump in with uh, with the two cost, um, where are they? The Murloc Tidehunters, because they throw down one, you throw down the 2-2-1, two, two, and then his battle cry is summon a 1-1 one, one Murloc Scout. So you throw him down, he gets thrown down, and then another gets thrown down. And uh, with in, con in conjunction with the one cost, uh, where did it go? Son of a bitch, where are you? You silly. He always, got, he always has a different face on the card. There he is. Oh, he was... Sorry, I was looking at the other cards, not the gold cards. In conjunction with this, if you throw him down, like, like let's say you have a two-mana turn, okay? You can throw him down first, throw down the 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 uh, other one, the, the Tide Hunter, and basically you're going to give this Murloc Tide Caller uh, uh, two extra attack, and it has uh, two health also. The War Leader's a no-brainer. Uh, no All Murlocs have 2-1 while it's out. That's a continuous effect. The Seer, now this is important to know, the Seer gives all Murlocs on the board to health, okay? When it's played, it's a battle cry. After that, it does not give it a continuous effect. If they kill the Seer, everything that you played it, played before it, is going to have the health that, that it's given, regardless. But now that, that pulls up a good concern, whenever you play this card, you're going to want to play it last, after you have a bunch of Murlocs out, okay? So that you give them all the buff possible. Now, it's important that you realize this with this Murloc deck. Because you might not think about this. All Murlocs have 2-1 with the War Leader. All Murlocs gain 2 health when you play it. Okay? All Murlocs. All. Including your enemy's Murlocs. So if your enemy has Murlocs, be aware that when you play these cards, you're going to be buffing his cards too. So... Let's talk about some of the other cards besides just uh, the these. And this is a charge card, by the way. Really good situational card. And this is just a one cast. Just throw it out there to have it. The Oracle gives all Murlocs one attack. Again, be careful. But it gives that's a continuous effect. So if you have this out with the War Leader, 
with you know one of the other murlocs you know like the the tide the tide hunter that has the two one whatever then you throw this down you can have like six six five five four five four five like it gets nasty especially with a really low cast taunt again this is why i like warlock again for another reason early cast taunt a one one three taunt void walker easily one a really really good really really good taunt card um, I also go my other taunt card with Shield Bear. There's zero attack, but it's a 1-4. One, a one These are just to keep some pressure off of your Murlocs while you stack them. So let's talk about some of the legendaries here. We've got Lore Rocker Cho. The one weakness of this deck, guys, is AoE board clears. Okay, so we're talking Blizzard from a Mage. We're talking uh, uh, Hellfire from another, another Warlock. We're talking Consecrate from a Paladin. Um, even Priests have an AoE uh, attack. Um, Blade Flurry from, from Rogue. There's a lot of options to board wipe. What this does, for a 2 cost, it's a legendary card, 2 cost, 1 attack, 4 health. It's got high health. Whenever a, car, whenever a player casts a spell, you put a copy of it into the other player's hand. So, I get a copy of it. <clears throat> whenever I cast a spell, he gets a copy. He, I, I think this is how it works. I think. I don't know for sure. I haven't done this because I don't have spells on this. I think the way it's played is if I, it says whenever a player casts a spell, put a copy into the other player's hand. So if I were to cast a spell, he would get one. If he casts a spell, I get one. But I don't have any. I don't have any spells in this, so it doesn't even matter. Um, but a really good card to alleviate. Even if they, even if they board wipe, you got another board wipe. You can board wipe them back, and then you can start to rebuild. So, uh, Nat Pagel, uh, again, this is for card drawing. You're gonna want to keep drawing cards. The more you draw cards, the more the time the, the time goes. Um, the more dangerous it is for you to win. You should try to be winning by like turn five or six. But if that doesn't work out, uh, Nat's a really good card. You throw him out there. He's got a lot of health, especially if you have blood uh, blood him out. Instead of four health, he's going to have six. Same thing with uh, the uh, lower rocket show. Um, and at the end of your turn, you have fifty percent to draw another card. Very strong. Now uh, the only other two that I have that are legendaries is old Murkai. He has a charge. Has one attack for each Murloc on the battlefield. So you can put him down. He can be like a 6-4 or like a 7-4. Go ahead and charge in. Take out a ton if you need to. Something like that. Hogger. Uh, six cast. Uh, he's my highest cast card. And I know that you're looking at CJ and say, no, it's not. But wait till I talk about CJ. Hogger. Um, six cast. Four attack. Four health. And at the end of the turn, you summon a 2-2 two -two null with taunt. So it's another taunt. And he's a pseudo taunt too. They're going to want to take him out. So they're going to want to focus him. So he's kind of a pseudo taunt anyways. So you throw him out next, when you end your turn, another uh, card will pop up with a 2-2 two -two to, to block. Now, ra other cards to mention. Raid Leader. Give your other minions one attack. If you throw out, let's say, the two War Leaders in one attack, and you already have some Murlocs on the board, that's going to be strong damage. But if in the next turn you throw out the Raid Leader behind it, it's going to give a 1 to all your freaking minions, and then you're just going to plow them into the enemy. Very, 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 very strong. So, um... It's really, really, really good card. Now, Knife Juggler. I just recently threw this into my deck. It's a 2 cost, 3 attack, 2 health. After you summon a minion, deal 1 damage to, to a random enemy. I used to have Pint Size Summoner. If I could put the Pint Size Summoner out there, um, it, would, it would allow me on my next turn to uh, mitigate 2 mana costs for the next minion I play. It's a really good card. It's a strong choice. But I'm trying out the Knife Juggler. So you might want to alternate between them. See what you like. <clears throat> Excuse me. But the Knife Juggler... After a uh, minion is uh, summoned, you deal one damage to an enemy, uh, random enemy. So this in conjunction, of course, with the Tide Hunter again that summons two minions on a two cost, uh, can be rather deadly. And the rate you're going to be throwing out one cast taunts, one cast raiders, one cast oracles, Tide Collars, Footmen, Blood Imps, shit like that. It's, it's, it's going to, he's just going to be, and he has, especially if you can get two out. That's when things start getting really crazy, because every time you play a card, it's two damage randomly. And it'll go to the hero, too. So, here's the last one. The last one is uh, Sea Giant. Now, the Sea Giant seems like a 10-cost card, 8 attack, 8 health. But the Sea Giant costs one less mana for each other minion on the battlefield. Take into consideration... Um, it's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to be... Uh, uh, th this, this takes their board as well it's all minions not just your own so let's say you have six minions out there they got three this is going to be a one cast card for an eight eight it's a no-brainer it's a great card so we've gone over the cards i think it's pretty much everything um let's go ahead and let's take it to a let's just play let's play a match so i can kind of show you what i'm talking about in play hopefully i don't get my my ass kicked but we'll see my chat's yelling at me right now 
They're like, ah, what's going on, blah, blah, If you guys are here, I'm making a video right now, so love you guys. But we're going we're gonna to take this in and see what we can do with it. Um, I'll cut the video short if I lose this. But if I win, I'll be like, well, I'll just include this. It'll be great. It'll be fine. So we're jumping in. No, this is a worst case scenario. Mage is so strong with AoE. So uh, it's, it's pretty much, this is not a bad start. It's not a bad start, especially with the cold here, because it's going to give health to the to the extra minions. But I'm telling you right now, this mage is probably gonna probably gonna whoop me. Mage is the only character that I think works absolutely <coughs> against you completely in a situation like this. So, first turn, I'm gonna go ahead and throw out a taunt. I'm gonna throw out the protection first, and then I'm gonna start building up Murlocs right after it. Next turn, I'll probably go for the tide for the tide hunter. Let's see what he does. He's going to go for me, go ahead and do the one damage. That's her turn. I think she's going to wait. She's going to wait and see what happens. Doesn't have a lot of mana anyways. This turn I'm going to go ahead and play the one, the 2-1 the Murlocs. Can't do anything. Now next turn, depending on what I draw too, I may throw out early, early, the Cold Seer to give two health to each. Because if I can get two health to each, it's going to... Okay, so that one's dead. Um, it's going to keep them alive during a thing. Actually, War Leader. War Leader, again, 2-1 to all, to all uh, other minions. I'm just, I'm just scared of the, the Blizzard is what it is. The Blizzard is what frightens me. Keeps me up at night. Gives me bad dreams. If I can survive after this round, if I play this card survive after this round, it's going to be really bad for her. If she doesn't board wipe this next round, I'm going to make a big play. And I'll show you how powerful this can get early. Anyways, by the way, I hope anybody who's watching is is having a really good day. She just drew two cards. She's okay. Here we go. Oh, and a murloc. Uh, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna use my coin. This is again. If you go second on your turn, you get a mana coin. Gives you one extra mana crystal for the turn. I'm gonna go ahead and play that. I'm gonna play the charge, which is gonna go right out the gate. Then I'm gonna play the cold seer after it. Now I played it after. Remember the battle cry. Boom! Everybody gets five, four, five, two. Everybody gets two health afterwards. So these guys are pretty strong already. So I'm just going to go ahead and run them in. So she's already almost at half health. So now depending what she plays, even if she plays an arcane blizzard, or, or blizzard, maybe she'll arcane, whatever. She fireballed the, the, the main guy. If she board wipes, it's going to be tough for them. She may be able to board wipe it now. Nope, she, she used her, her whole thing there. So this turn, we have options. I'm definitely going to play the charge. I'm going to hold back. I'm going to hold back on that, that taunt, that extra taunt, see what I can get. So if I don't win, if she does not do something to board wipe me this turn, if she does nothing to board wipe me this turn, it'll be game. Let's see what she does. I'm sure she's going to have a blizzard or an arcane explosion or something like that. It'd be, it'd be silly to think she doesn't. She's got, what, nine cards? I mean, she's got to have something. So she'll probably board wipe it. But even if she does... Oh, she played Abomination. Abomination's a really strong card against this. Um, basically, what Abomination does is... Uh, it has a taunt, so I can't attack the hero directly. I gotta attack this. But on the death, it does two damage to all characters. But I'll survive. I'm going to survive with these, with these characters right here. Hell, I'll even survive with this if I play it out. So I'm going to put this out. Well, let's wait a second. Let's think about this. Because I got I got plenty to play. Let's, um... <laughs> this is going to be stupid. I think this is game, actually. Pretty sure. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to go ahead and sack these two. It's going to blow up. She's going to take two damage to herself. These are going to survive. Again, that's where the Cold Seer comes into play. Because she came out... She, I'm calling it a she. I have no idea why. Uh, um, because she came out, she gave all the rest of them two health. So they can survive that. Now, hell, we can go ahead, throw down another Murloc, throw that out. It's going to buff these guys. It's a 4-4. We win. It was a really, really, really powerful deck. If she doesn't have AoE, it's, it's going to suck for her. So we got to win. Um, hopefully you guys uh, understood everything. I was explaining it well enough. Play with the deck yourself.